In today's video, we're going to look at Putnam 2020, the recent Putnam, number A2, which was a suggestion from one of the viewers of the channel. And it asks to figure out a formula for the sum j equals 0 to n, 2 to the n minus j, n plus j choose j. We're going to look at two different solutions, one using binomials, another using power series in a really interesting and clever way. So stay tuned for this fun video on different approaches to this really interesting combinatorial sum problem. Hey, welcome to today's video on Prof. Omar. So let's try to figure out this sum. The first thing we're going to do is try to make a recursive formula by looking at a recursive formula satisfied by binomial coefficients. So if you have a general binomial coefficient a choose b, it's equal to a minus 1 choose b plus a minus 1 choose b minus 1. And you can kind of see this from Pascal's triangle. If you wrote down Pascal's triangle, which is this triangle right here, every element is the sum of the two elements above it. And all these numbers happen to be binomial co coefficients themselves. So this expression um, is actually something that's illuminated in that uh, triangle. Okay, so let's let our sum be a sub n then we'll use our recursive formula to rewrite n choose j as a sum of binomials. So we'll have the sum j equals 0 to n, 2 to the n minus j, and then setting a to be n plus j, our top part of the binomial, and b to be the bottom part, j, we get n plus j minus 1 choose j plus n plus j minus 1 choose j minus 1. Now in the second binomial, we can actually ignore the j equals zero case, but we'll see that in a second. So let's split this sum up. We get the sum j equals zero to n, two to the n minus j, n plus j, j minus one choose j, and then the sum j equals zero to n of two to the n minus j, n plus j minus one choose j minus one. Now in that second sum, the j equals zero term doesn't actually make any sense. You can't use the recursive formula when j is zero. So that term won't actually um, exist. So um, we'll be able to replace the sum here with a sum from one to n instead of a sum from zero to n. Okay, and then we see on the right hand side we have sort of the same thing we had before but with a lower index. So this is gonna help us. So the sum j equals 0 to n, 2 to the n minus j, n plus j minus 1 choose j. And then we have the sum j equals 0 to n minus 1 by re-indexing of 2 to the n minus j minus 1, n plus j choose j. So the second sum actually looks very much like our beginning term a sub n is just like slightly off because we have a n minus one involved here instead of an n. Um, so it's close to being a sub n, but it's not quite a sub n. So we're gonna need to do something with that. Um, so we have this closeness, but we wanna be able to like manage with it somehow. So um, what we'll do is we'll start by taking this previous sum that we had, the sum j equals 0 to n, 2 to the n minus j times n plus, one choose, minus, n plus j minus 1 choose j, and rewrite it by taking out all the terms except for the last term. The term when j equals n itself is n plus n minus 1 choose n. So that's 2n minus 1 choose n. And then we'll take this half we get from the 2 to the negative 1 in the second sum end, take that out and we get the sum j equals 0 to n minus 1, 2 to the n minus j, n plus j choose j. Now that latter sum looks a lot more like our term a sub n, but it's missing the top sum end when j equals n. Also, our first sum actually looks a lot like 
uh, the thing that we have as well, if we think about writing the binomial as n minus 1 plus j choose j. So now we have something like an a sub n minus 1, except for the exponent on the 2 is a little bit off. We need to make it an n minus 1, but if we're going to do that, we need to multiply by 2 on the left. So this organization of our sum actually presents us with something that looks close to a recursive formula. The entire first sum now with the 2 taken out is a sub n minus 1. If you replace n in a sub n with n minus 1 throughout, you'll get that a sub n minus 1. And then here we have half of a n, but with the top term missing. So we have to subtract off that top term, which is uh, when j is n. So we get 2 to the n minus n, which is 2 to the 0. And then we get 2n choose n because j is n. Okay, so we almost have a recursive formula, but we need to rearrange things a little bit. So we get 2a sub n minus 1. Then we have this superfluous 2n minus 1 choose n. Uh, and then we have a half a n. And then we have minus a half 2n choose n. Now here's where the magic comes. It turns out that this leftover binomial piece, 2n minus 1 choose n, is actually the same as half 2n choose n. If you want to leave your thoughts on why that's the case, leave your thoughts in the comments about this. So what remains is 2 sub 2a sub n minus 1 minus a half a sub n. So now we actually have a recursive formula. a sub n is 2a n minus 1 minus a half a n. That should be plus a half a n actually. So if we rearrange, recognizing that should have been plus half a n, we get a sub n is 4 times a sub n minus 1. Cool. So we've really simplified what's going on here. Uh, and we need to know what the base case is in order to figure out what the general formula for a sub n is. So the base case is when n, a, n is 0. We only have one sum n. is 2 to the 0 minus 0 times 0 plus 0 choose 0. And that's all 1. So if we iterate then, we'll get that a sub n is 4 to the n. What a surprising compact expression for this entire huge sum. Now, this method required a lot of sort of like clarity and caution. We used the binomial expansion, but then things got kind of um, a little bit uh, tricky to be careful with. So we're going to approach this a different way by looking at things using power series. So we're going to recognize n plus j choose j as the x to the n coefficient in the expansion of 1 plus x to the n plus j. Right? And the reason is that the x to the nth coefficient actually is n plus j choose n, but that's the same as n plus j choose j because n and j add up to m plus j, and there's symmetry in binomial coefficients. Okay, so recognizing that, then the entire sum that we have can be represented as the x to the nth coefficient of a sum of power series. So we've written down our original sum here, and we'll now think about it as this is the notation we use for the coefficient of x to the n, in a bunch of different polynomials added is the sum j equals 1 to n of 2 to the n minus j times 1 plus x all raised to the n plus j as j varies. Okay, so now this amounts to figuring out the x to the nth coefficient in this series. We'll pull out the 2 to the n and 1 plus x to the n factors because they don't depend on the index that we're summing over, which is j. So you get the sum j equals 0 to n of 2 to the negative j, 1 plus x to the j. And we can write this particular sum in a compact way, recognizing it as a sum of powers of an individual polynomial. So this is the x to the nth coefficient of 2 to the n times 1 plus x all raised to the n. And then we can write this leftover sum thinking about it as a geometric series. 
um, where we have uh, the actual ratio is this polynomial 1 plus x all over 2. Okay, so let's then use that to figure out a nice compact way to do this. And the whole point of doing this is if we represent this as a series, we'll be able to figure out the coefficient. So the sum of a geometric series with ratio um, r, with a term starting from j equals 0 to n, is this expression right over here. 1 minus the quantity 1 plus x over 2, all raised to the n plus 1, over 1 minus... One plus, the quantity 1 plus x over 2. Okay, so we're left with that our sum that we're interested in is the x to the co nth coefficient of this series. Let's do some algebra to clarify what this series looks like in order to figure out a concrete expression. Okay, so if we put things together here on the numerator and denominator, the denominator will have a 2 minus 1 minus x all over 2. The denominator will have a 2 to the n plus 1 there, and then a 2 to the n plus 1 minus the quantity 1 plus x all raised to the n plus 1. It's good to take care here because we want this thing to end up being a particular expression of interest. So if we put things together, we'll have a 1 minus x on the denominator with a factor of 2 multiplied. So we'll multiply that factor of 2 to get 2 to the n plus 1 1 plus x all raised to the n. And then the next factor is a 1 plus x all raised to the 2n plus 1, because we have 2n plus 1 copies of 1 plus x. But the 2 to the n, the 2 way from the denominator, and the 2 to the n plus 1 in the denominator of the numerator fraction all cancel each other out. So it's kind of a mess, but we now have this concrete thing. This is the x to the nth coefficient of this particular power series. Okay, so now we can think about this as the polynomial in the numerator multiplied by the series 1 over 1 minus x. And that series is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. So we'll get the x to the nth coefficient of 2 to the n plus 1, 1 plus x, 1 to, 1 plus x all raised to the n times that entire series expanded minus the x to the nth coefficient of 1 plus x to the 2n plus 1 times the series itself, 1 plus x plus x squared, etc. Okay, so how do we figure out the coefficient of x to the n in these two different series? We can think about pairing things together. So the, for the first one, we have 2 to the n plus 1 throughout. And then we have a sum, j equals 0 to n. Thinking about how we actually extract an x to the nth coefficient from the product of these two things. It comes from taking an x to the j coefficient and 1 plus x to the n, and that coefficient is n choose j, and pairing it with an x to the n minus j coefficient in the latter series, which is just 1. So we get the sum j equals 0 to n, n choose j. Now by a similar light, if we want to figure out the x to the nth coefficient in the product of the latter two things, we'll have 2n plus 1 choose j as the x to the jth coefficient of the first polynomial, and then multiplied by the x to the n minus j coefficient of the latter, and that is 1. So we get the sum j equals 0 to n, 2n plus 1 choose j. So now we've written our original sum in a way that is expressed in terms of regular binomial coefficients where the upper part doesn't change. That helps. Because, for example, the sum j equals 0 to n, n choose j, is 2 to the n. And to see why, we can imagine putting a fake x to the j coefficient besides n choose j, and then we'd get the expansion of 1 plus x to the n by the binomial theorem. And we'd be setting x equals 1 to get the sum that we have. Similarly, we can show that the latter sum is actually a half of 2 to the 2n plus 1. To see why, effectively what we're adding here is the sum of the first n binomial coefficients 2n plus 1 choose j. Is that first n plus 1 of them actually. And there's 2n two plus, two plus 2 of them in total if we add in the latter ones, which is the sum j equals n plus 1 to 2n plus 1 of 2n plus 1 choose j. Now the sum of all of these binomial coefficients is 2 
to the exponent of the thing we're choosing, which is 2m plus 1. Just like we saw that the sum j equals 0 to n, n choose j is 2 to the n. But there's symmetry between the black and the gray sum that we have here. Because 2n plus 1 choose j is the same as 2m plus 1 choose 2m plus 1 minus j, we can switch the indices and replace every occurrence of j with 2m plus 1 minus j. That would make the 2m plus 1 go to 0 and the m plus 1 go to n. So that latter sum, the, j, the sum j equals m plus 1 to 2m plus 1 of 2m plus 1 choose j, actually is the same as the sum from j equals 0 to n. So we have two copies of the sum that we're curious about equal to 2 to the 2m plus 1. And so the sum is actually half that. So we're left with, in total, 2 to the 2m plus 1, multiplying the 2n plus 1 in the, beside the first sum n, minus half times 2 to the 2m plus 1. And that gives us a total of half of 2 to the 2m plus 1, which is 2 to the 2n, which is 4 to the n. So you get the same result thinking about this using series instead of the magical things that happen with the binomial coefficients. And one of the reasons I like this approach is because it's very systematic and allows us to go th through things in a methodical way. And we don't have, like in the first proof, this superfluous 2n plus 1 choose n that we don't necessarily know what to do with.